All right, welcome back to another episode of Bubba Tango's Project Restoration. In this episode, we're going to break down the project from securing the project, what I'm going to look for, and all the way down to cash flow and money and what it's going to cost, whether this vessel or another vessel. I'm actually looking at two other vessels you've seen in the previous vessel in the excuse me you've seen the previous episodes. Went and looked at that Trojan 33 and uh, multiple times and it unfortunately you know really hasn't panned out i've still got it in the back of my mind whether i want to take it on or not before the owner decides to uh to cut the damn thing up but um we've got two other um vessels we, we're going to look at a uh, 41 jersey and a uh 40 foot uh, lures um both sport fishes um, both from New jersey i believe all right so i'm just going to lay this out real quick and uh um securing a project number one we're going to secure the vessel. What does that mean? Going out, we're going to break it down. Inspection. Okay. Now, when you buy a boat, typically you get it surveyed. All right. There's lots of good surveyors out there across this country. There's an entire uh, association dedicated to uh, surveyors. Surveyor I used forever, and I believe she's retired now. She was, uh, her name was Joyce Nolan. Um, she was the bomb. She inspected like five of my boats and told me exactly what to look for. You know, you, I learned some things just by watching her and, uh, and she was a, she was a really good, uh, 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 surveyor. Um, all right. So under inspections, we have, uh, what we looked at, um, uh, we looked at structure. Okay. Now you probably saw in the video where I beat the hull. I took a rubber, a rubber, a white rubber mallet and I proceeded to beat the hull, listening for uh, a different sound, a delamination, um, anything with the stringers of the hull, uh, osmotic, uh, is that what it's called? Osmotic blistering, we get the bubbles in it. Primarily, it happens, happens on many boats, but on sailboats it happens a lot, um, for whatever reason, uh, I don't know. All right, B, mechanicals. All right, what's the mechanicals? All right, that's any, anything to, to make it go. All right, we're gonna talk about engine, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, the running gear, the shafts, the props, the rudders, you know, anything to make it go forward, all right? Those are mechanicals in my mind. So, uh, generator, you know, anything along that line. C, wiring, if you can see it. You need the, the, the power from the batteries, you gotta get it to the char charging whirlers, to power up the uh, the the extra uh, uh, accessories on the boat, and then uh, where do you go from there? Got to be able to start the engine. Got got to get the starter. Got the starter solenoid. Okay, so got to look at that wiring. Moving forward from the engines, you have the, all the interior stuff. You have oh my god, the control panel. The control panel on that thirty three was it was scary. I mean, I was getting power when I brought my uh, my 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 box and I hooked it up directly to the uh, starter and the solenoid and uh, pressed. Press the button to get those uh, um, starters going. I was just unsure when I was hooking it up to the cable directly to the cables if I was getting power through the uh, through the panel. And that panel it, it looked scary. It was old. So, all right, D. We're gonna look at uh, plumbing. Plumbing. Those are all. Is anything from your through holes, through holes up to the engine, through holes up to your uh, your wa your water your um, your plumbing, your plumbing from the heads or the shower, um, getting anything out of the boat. So a lot, a lot of through haul stuff. You know, if you can work through all your through haul stuff and you're sure those are good to go, and you can get it in the water. E, I just talked about through hauls. Yep, they're brass. They usually have ball valves on them. You just want to make sure that that when they're closed, that they're actually holding, that they're not cracked, and that they're uh, that they're bedded properly inside and outside the hull. All right. F. Running gear. I talked about that as well. Running gear, shafts, props, all right, rudders, you know, trim tabs, zincs, anything that's going to go on to that boat, make sure it works properly. Your cutlass bearings, your skegs, your your packing uh, for your uh, your dripless packing on the on the shafts coming back into the engine, and uh, oh, and transmission. So transmissions are also in the mechanical unless it's a direct direct drive shaft. You got your v, your velvet drives, your V drives. Um, so, all right, so that's all under number two with the inspection. That's everything that we, we try to look at when we're 
uh, either buying a boat, you know, if it's if it's a newer boat, you know, this is for a, based on a project vessel. So if you're looking for a new boat, you're going to get with a surveyor like I talked about previously, and you're really going to get in, you're going to get into it. Let them let them deal with it. Okay, so you know if that's a new boat, you know whether it's twenty thousand or two point five million, you know it, it, you're going to have the or better, you know it's you're going to have the surveyor look at it. All right, all right. Under inspection, we have the infamous. Everybody does videos on them. Will it run? See if the see if the vessel, you know, outboard engines, inboard engines, will it run? Gas or diesel, will it run? Okay. If it doesn't run, that's a whole nother ball of wax. If it's close enough or it's already out of the water and you can work on it where it's at, you know, if you can get a towed, sea tow or whoever, and have it brought closer to you, if it's on a trailer. Those are all the things you have to consider. I'm considering because all the boats I'm looking at are across the bay and I need to basically bring them back across the bay to the western shore of Maryland. From Maryland's eastern shore to Maryland's western shore, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Will it run? If it doesn't run, what's it going to take to get it run? Four on my list. To do. A to do list. Obviously, we just talked about spreadsheet. Okay, you need a spreadsheet to develop your costs, your materials, and most importantly, your timeline. Don't ever go into a project without knowing your timeline when you're going to be done, because that's when your project becomes not a six months project; it becomes a seven year project or a ten year project, and you'll never be able to enjoy it unless the enjoyment you get is from actually doing the work. All right, under the spreadsheet and cost of material, we said that, CM, cost of material. All right, what it needs list. You know, after you determine all of this stuff up here with the inspection, what the vessel needs. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty obvious, pretty plain and simple. You know, you go through your inspection, you go through all those those items, and then you get down to the will it run and the to-do spreadsheet, what the vessel needs, what it needs to either A, get in the water, or what it needs to get across the bay, have fun and enjoyment on it. Can you keep on working on it while you're enjoying it? Different for everyone. And then as I also said, the timeline, project completion. Make sure you have... When is that going to happen? Project completion. All right, after you develop that, then we're going to go for the project breakdown. Yeah. Under the project breakdown, what needs to happen first? Okay, now I've developed a list of what, what I'm working on needs to happen. So number one item, as you may have seen in the previous videos, is what? The engine. Next, number two is the fuel tanks and condition. Many fuel tanks need to be replaced on older boats, okay? Whether it's a center console, it's a walk around cuddy, it's a sport fish, it's a cruiser, it's a, uh, you know, anything where the fuel tanks are in the hall when they could have water on them. Um, a lot of the older ones were um, sealed with, uh, with, the, uh, with the foam. The foam, which is supposed to be uh, not impervious to water or supposed to be impervious to water, over time it gets waterlogged and then that water sits on the tanks. Whether those tanks were steel, poly, or aluminum, ultimately they need to be replaced on older, older boats. All right, number three, controls. Functionality. This ve last vessel I was looking at controls fly bridge, thro uh, throttle, and uh, shifter. Those linkages down to the engine. One was working fine, one was seized up. Okay? We can probably guess which one was seized up. Yes, the engine that will run. When a person puts in an ad that a vessel will run and you get there, it doesn't run, you know, a junkyard engine will run after it's rebuilt. Number four, through hulls. Very important. Through hulls, brass, 
Are they bedded properly? Are they cracked? Do they leak? You know, the whole nine yards. Look at those. Very important. Number five, bottom, blisters, condition, and paint. Blistering, big problem, right? Old, older boats, boats are in the water a lot. You know, water gets in there. You know, gel coat, fiber, it's not impervious. It will ultimately, you know, that's why we put uh, three, four, five layers of epoxy barrier coat on the bottom underneath of our one or two coats of barrier coat, all right? We do the barrier coat, what, every, every at least every two years? You know, most people, some people do it every year. Depending on your vessel, depending on what you what you do, depending on how much you you're how how often you're running. You know, if your your bar your boat's just sitting in the water and collecting barnacles or collecting you know algae and whatever else marine growth is coming on it. You know, depending on how much of a uh, copper ablative is in your is in your bottom coat. All things go into that. All things we gotta look at. And number six, put into the water if it's out. That's our end goal. Those six items under project breakdown. The next item, number six, I gotta change the markers. This is not much of the last one. This may vary for people, okay? So you saw number, the six item on under project breakdown with get it into the water. Now for any of my projects moving forward is get the vote, get closer to me. This is not a whiteboard. This is a big sheet of glass I have in my office. When we put it up, I thought it was going to be great, but maybe it's the marker. Under all of these issues, all right, now to get closer to me, that was in part of the last video, all right, and that is finding a marina that can support our endeavors. We're going to talk about, about money and cost, what you feel, what you need, what you can afford. I like searching the old interweb. Ooh, I like this one. For on Craigslist, this really isn't answering the question, but Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for free. Okay. Now that runs the gamut. If you saw the very first video, that was a stupid wild goose chase. Somebody must have thought it was a joke. You know, but when you ask for free boats, that's what you get. You get a lot of uh, empty hulls, broken boats, stuff been sitting in the weeds forever. And in that case, in the freaking water, I find free. Now, I do have a budget. I have a budget for a project. I'm not going to find a project that needs, you know, it's a great hull. It's a great boat. If it needs engines, you know, I'm not going to give you five grand for the boat. You know, you look at, you look through the, through the, uh, um, pages and you and you see like you know 40 foot cigarette had twin 500 hps in it okay well you pulled out all the rigging and the engines engines are going to cost what 30 g's a piece 15 g's a piece plus the re-rigging i need to get out drives i need to get trans i need to get Standoff plates, I need K planes, I need drive showers, I mean, what? And I need all the, the, the controls. You know, a lot of people don't know when, you know, when you're buying an outboard, outboard engine, you know, if you want to go get one of those new uh, Mercury 450Rs, and again, I don't know what, what they cost, you know, say that costs $30,000. Say it costs $40,000. I bet you that the rigging cost uh, another fifteen. Nobody ever, you know, if you're able to spend that much money and you're repowering a boat, make sure you look at the price of the rigging to re-rig the boat. Throttles, cables, steering, because you will, you will be amazed when someone's trying to sell you even a used engine, you know, that the rigging may not come with it. So always look at that. Engine on a repower, if you need to add that in, that could be, if it's an outboard, an inboard, this could be, oh my God, zero to 40,000. An inboard could be zero to, to 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. You know, it's, it's, it's really hard to say, you know, it, depending on, you know, there's so much spread there as to how much stuff costs. Okay. 
So that's the stuff you got to think about. All right, so you're already in the hole. But let's get let's get back to something easy. We'll talk specifically about that Trojan. All right, Trojan. Nope. Holy smokes. Let's talk specifically about that vessel. That was an Egg Harbor 33. 33, 35 was relatively the same boat. This was the second version of it. They bought the mold from Pacemaker. They redid it. All right, so this was a 1985. This boat has twin 454s. 350 horsepower each, okay? They're Crusaders. Supposed running, I couldn't get them to run. Now, if you need to get that engine rebuilt, how much does that cost? If you need a long, say you re re replace it with a running long block, or not a running long block. If you replace it, go to eBay, and you get yourself a, uh, a replacement engine that, that's, you know, running takeout, say. You know, how much is that? Four, five, six, Seven, eight thousand dollars. We'll say four to eight thousand dollars. Okay. If you need um, transmissions, transmissions for four fifty four, a V drive. Say that's fifteen hundred. Okay. So you're at fifty five to uh, ninety five hundred times two. We're at eleven thousand to uh, to to twenty eleven to twenty thousand just in engines, just in engines. Okay. Now that gets you in the water. Now. This boat had electrolysis going on, so the fuel tanks, they needed to be replaced. They had been replaced. The floor, the deck is cut out. It's soft as you know what. All that water is just sitting in there for eight years. I opened it up, looked down inside there, saw, you saw the pictures if you watched that, watched that last video or two videos ago, and there was electrolysis and uh, aluminum corrosion forming. So fuel tanks needed to be replaced. I don't know the cost on that. But I'm willing to bet it's what those were three, no, those were one, one seventy-five gallon a piece, I believe in that boat, maybe one fifty. So and you're looking at two of them. I mean, they got to be what fifteen hundred each. Now we're at three k on that engines, fuel tanks, wiring. Oh my God, that wiring was a mess. Have somebody come in and rewire that boat unless you do it yourself. How much of this can you do yourself? Okay. If I wanted to invest the money, could I do a lot of this myself? Absolutely. I'm really good at fiberglass. I've already built a boat. If you watch that on Bubba, Bubba Tango 18, you know, I'm, I can fare, I can glass, I can, you know, make, make pieces. I can do molds. I can, I, you know, all that, all that I can do myself. Engines. I know a lot about engines. I can feel like I can get them started. Starboard side in that boat, we had a good incl inkling that it would fire. That was along with the controls worked, were fluid and stuff. They, they said it was the last one that was running. Okay, the other one was the bad one. So that's where I started first. Engines, transmission, fuel tank, through holes, brass through holes, inch and, inch and a quarter, inch and a half brass through hole has got to be what, $300? Um, and you need what, four for, and you need two, two to four. Just, and we're talking just to get the uh, just get the, the the boat the boat going, just to get the boat in the water. In this case, just to get the boat in the water, four through hulls at three hundred each. And I could be a little bit off on that. Apollo brass uh, valves and what they they cost in in my industry, um, you know, pretty good. It could be fifteen hundred dollars each. So you're twelve hundred bucks there. Again, just to get the boat moving. All right. Batteries are, are trivial. You could have handheld, just again, just to get it in the water. What, handheld GPS, really don't need that. You need running lights just in case. You need your bilge pumps, definitely. You know, are you ready to go? I don't know, electronic, uh, electronic. Uh, these, were, these were carbureted engines, but they still have electronics on them. So um, just to get it in the water. So we're at 3K, we're at, you know, you know 20, 23, 24, 25. Do all the labor yourself. If you don't do all the labor yourself, what are you at? Thirty thousand? Just thirty k, just to get it in the water. With you buy a boat. That egg harbor was for sale for two thousand dollars. Is that a no-brainer? Am I stupid for everything that you saw? The boat was sitting on the hard for eight years to begin with. Fuel tanks have roughly 200 gallons of varnish inside of them. You got to get that out. 
There's no marina's place to dispose of that fuel anywhere nearby. There's no uh, uh, fuel docks within 10 miles on the water. The outside of the hull was great. The stringers where I was beating on the outside were, were seemed sound like it was great. The hull, you know, didn't sound like there was any delamination. It was a solid boat on the outside. Inside, seals on the windows let go long ago. Water was make, working its way in. Sitting in the bilge, lots of water. Back by the engine, the uh, stringer underneath the engine on the star on the starboard side, outside outboard uh, stringer seemed a little soft. That helped that helped that decision. Interior paneling rotted, floor rotted. Um, if you notice, we were standing on portions of the floor that had plywood on them because there were holes in the plywood. You know, previous owner or maybe two owners. You know, there's had two owners since it's been sitting on the art that have failed, and it had like carpet in it. The water was getting in the boat and it was just sitting on the carpet creating mildew and the last owner finally pulled that out but the damage was long since done so all right 2k for that boat versus 30 and then another 30k on top of it so now you know just rough guesstimate if you add another 10 percent 20 percent for unknowns and again this is the majority of this doing you know so I bet we're looking at 40K to bring that egg harbor up to a point where it can go on its own bottom across the bay. Just, and then we're talking about woodwork. I mean, I think woodwork is fairly, I mean, it had some nice wood in there, but the paneling was done. The paneling was like, it was done. So where are you at? Another 10K and then just, you know, blood, sweat and tears, a little remediation inside, a little painting, a lot of painting, a lot of, a lot of trim work. And then how much of the plumbing under the floors is, is, is done you gotta pull all, oh my god so or we say or do you go for option number two do you take that 30k and just buy a brand new well not a brand new boat do you take that 30k and you go back to you know you can go back to like 1990s find a vessel that fits in that budget 40k at once may not have that to come out of your pocket who has 40k see the issues are when a vessel is more than 25 years old, no one wants to finance it. Now, there's some out there that I believe will. Uh, maybe you can get a cash loan if you need it. 40K is a lot of money for a lot of people to just go out and, and drop on a boat. This option up here is over time. And what will it take based on your budget? Over time, can I spend 40K or 30K over time to get this done? And pay the fees at the marina on the eastern shore absolutely that, that that's a great time i mean that that is your 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 the your your own finance here so that's great you're 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 doing everything yourself 40k so option two do you go in, out and find a boat that you want in the style that you want so how about a 1990 342 lures Sport fish, 454s, running in the water. I'm going to look at one. I'm going to look at one in like two weeks. You know, when the guy gets back in, back in from uh, from out of the country or something. I don't know, whatever they told me. That boat, not 40k. That boat is 24k, and it's five years newer. Doesn't need work. Yes, it needs work, but it's in the water. It's running. It's for sale by a broker. So you know that it's operational, it's running, but it does need work. It is a project boat that is operational, that is running. So that is a step in the right direction. Is 24K a good number? How much of a project is it? I've seen pictures, yes. So which, which option is better? For me, I don't know yet. Like I said, I'm going to look at, ironically, another lures. So I'm really looking at three boats. So I'm looking at 41 Jersey. I'm looking at a 1989 342 Lures. That's a, another project. And I'm looking at a 1990 342 Lures. All right. So, aka a project, but in the water running. So that gives me that gives me hope on that of what I want to do. And is there still plenty of stuff to do? Absolutely. That is a, what year is that? 30, oh my God. Are we getting that old? 30 three year old boat, 33 years of problems, 33 years of use, depending on how they used it. That's what we got for now. So that's my break. That's my cost breakdown. 
everything that, that I look at when I'm looking for a vessel, when I'm looking at these project vessels. What I go over and why I've gone to that last boat three times to look at it more and more in depth, decide if it's right for me, for my next project. But I don't just look at the boat. I look at the surrounding area where the boat is located. There, it's at a marina. It has a travel lift. The fellow that owns the marina, he's elderly. I wouldn't say he's elderly. He's, he's older. He's 25 years older than me. Still running the marina, still kicking. And he's got a bunch of boats out there, and he's making money on all of them by sitting up on the hard. But he doesn't offer any services, and he's out in the middle of freaking nowhere. So finding some a mobile mechanic that's not going to charge you an arm and a leg to drive all the way out to wherever just before they even start working on the boat. Okay, so it's a balance. What can you do yourself? What that equates to money-wise and what your savings and what you can't do yourself and what that's going to cost you. And you got to build that into your budget, into your spreadsheet, and then create a, a breakdown and a timeline. That's all for now. We'll, uh, we'll pick this up. I guess the next video will probably be on one of the three boats I'm going to look at. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll walk through this process in real time as we're looking at those boats. All right. Well, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.